to show you a really powerful tool in Lightroom that can help you get your files organized in a way that's going to make sense for you, helping you find the stuff you're looking for down the road. If you're like me or not, you may have been using Lightroom for a little while now, and you probably brought stuff in and kept it organized as you're bringing new stuff in, but you've got that old stuff, the stuff that you shot before Lightroom or when you weren't so careful. It's kind of like in those sitcoms where the character goes and opens the closet door and everything comes tumbling down on them. That's how I feel, and maybe some of you feel as well, about some of those older photos, folders of photos that you've got. I want to show you how you can fix those easily without tons of work in Lightroom. Let's take a look. I've got my Lightroom catalog open here. And as you see, in 2014, I've been very organized. I've got my personal folder. I've got my work folder. 2015, I'm continuing that. Back in 2013, though, I've just got this one folder of photos in October. And you say, well, 19 photos, that doesn't sound so bad. You should be able to organize that pretty quick. I mean, click on it, and there they are. Well, I've actually been dumping files into that outside of Lightroom, and I want to take a moment and make Lightroom aware of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is say synchronize this folder. As I was finding stuff on old hard drives, I was just dumping it into this folder because I knew that I was going to make changes. You can, of course, organize stuff outside of Lightroom, but then you're not using these powerful tools. Uh, and everything you do in Lightroom with the folders is reflected outside as well. So it's worth while to do it inside Lightroom to use those tools. So it is synchronizing, it is looking in that 2013 folder where I've been dumping stuff over time and it is finding all of these files. So here, here is outside of Lightroom and you can see a lots and lots of files, mostly from fall 2013. I'm going to keep this example fairly short and sweet. So we've got 1,052 files now in this October, two, sorry, this 2013 photos folder. I'm in the library module and I can come up here to metadata. Metadata, remember, is that little bits of information that is written into the photo file when your camera takes it or when you add it, when you bring it into Lightroom. One of the things that's written into all of these files is the date it was taken. And we've got that set up right here. It's our first filter. Let me just minimize this and this for a second. And so here we are, 2013 pictures taken, sorry, 10,052 pictures taken in 2013. And I can hit this little down arrow and see that we've got two from August, 185 from September, and 865 from October. Now just imagine if this was a whole year's worth. There they would be listed out month by month. You can switch this view to a flat view if you want, and then it gives you a running list of every single day that you took a picture and the number of pictures on that day. So you can see on some days, there um, I took one or two. Some days I didn't take any, like the 21st of September. But I really like the hierarchical view because what we're going to do in a minute. So now I can simply go in here and click on September and it sorts these. I'm going to drag this up a little bit. I don't need quite that much room. It sorts these and shows me these are all pictures taken on September. Over here I've got camera information too. You can change this to a tons of different things, but we're going to keep it. Well, I can't resist showing you that you, if you've tagged stuff, you can use data from the GPS and map location. I think that's really cool. But uh, we got this information in here. It's a bunch of random stuff. To keep it simple and to just kind of start to narrow this down, I'm simply going to break it down into months as I already did with October. So here are the 185 by clicking and highlighting this. Here are the 185 pictures I took in September. And there's some theme to them. A lot of, looks like a lot of fall photos. I'm gonna simply highlight those photos with Control A um, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a subfolder. I'm simply going to type 2013 September. You might say, well, why are you going to add 2013 on the front? You've already got that on photos. You've, it, well, you know what? It, it is a little bit picky or particular, but I do like everything to describe what it is. And so if for any reason the September folder got moved outside of the 2013 photos, I would still know at a glance that it was the 2013 September. This is the important check mark right here, include selected photos. I'm gonna just click create. And you can see that it is removing from the big folder and adding to this 2013 September folder. And it's gonna take just a minute to do that. And it's 
much cleaner. While it's doing that, we can even, if we wanted to, move to the October folder and continue to work. So now we're in here in October, and you can see that I've already actually had some pictures in October. So instead of adding a new folder, I can just select these guys, and I can just drag and drop into the October folder. This is a year. You're going to actually move these files on disk. Are you sure that's what you want to do? Yes, that is sure what I want to do. And now we've got two operations running. We are moving the files from the messy 2013 folder into October and September. I could do the same thing with August as well, but I think you get the idea there. Let's go back to this October folder. Well, actually, let's go to September since that's closer to being done. And we see we got some, well, we won't talk about those. We got some cows in here. We got some running dogs, a lot of fall photos and some sunset photos. In the library module, you have a lot of tools available to you that help you further categorize and keep track of your photos. But for right now, let's just take a look. Let's come back here to the metadata. Let's open up and dial in to say, when, when were most of these pictures taken? Well, 581 pictures were taken on Sunday inside this sep Oop, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong place. Here we go. Let's go back to October, because that is where I want to work. And now we see that 581 pictures were taken on Sunday. And I'm looking at these and seeing that they look identical one after the another. And oh, right, this is a time lapse. Uh, but, you know, if you go through enough, I know this from looking at it earlier, or waiting if we patiently waited until it all entered. Let's take a moment and do that now. Finish that up. So, as I was saying, 581 photos in here. And scrolling through, I see that there are a time lapse. Oh, but there are a couple others that are different. And a quick way to separate these now is to move over here to camera and see, well, I took 557 with a GoPro. That must be the time lapse. And then 70, or sorry, 24 with the Canon 70D. That wasn't the time lapse. So, real quick, let's get these into their own folder. So, I've just selected them. I'm going to right click here and say add a subfolder and call this Fall Scenic Time Lapse, or TL for short. Include the selected photos. And again, it's going to move those as well, but let's take a moment and look back and remind ourselves what this folder looked like a minute ago with tons and tons of files sitting outside of it. Here are those August files I haven't dealt with yet. But if we dial into October, we can see that we have our fall scenic time lapse right there. And in there is those GoPro files. So what I'm doing inside of Lightroom is being mirrored or reflected outside in the real world, if you want to say that. And it allows us to use these tools, drag and drop, selecting, file new, to really get organized fairly quickly. Now this is just a small preview of my hour-long episode 4 Lightroom guide. I'm calling this one Power Tools because I take the time to show you these powerful tools, things like the library filter, all of the folder information that we've been working with, and even better, the next step beyond that is Collections and Smart Collections, which is an incredibly powerful way for you to organize your photos and have access to them throughout the Lightroom modules. And one of the things that I commonly hear people say when I talk about Lightroom and raw photography is that they don't want to shoot raw. They don't want to have to edit every photo. You don't. Lightroom makes it so that when you import, you can edit the photos automatically. And I show you that in this series as well. Lots of great information and it's just $2.49. I always wonder when I watch the people do like the infomercials, the OxyClean, are they really that excited about their product? Are they being genuine and honest? And I can say after building this, well, I don't know if they are, but I am really this excited about it because we have put a lot of effort into this. It is good. And the feedback and the reviews we've been getting have been fantastic. And so we're really proud of this. We're really excited to be offering this to folks and the direction and the growth that we're moving. Take a moment, visit photorec.tv slash shop, pick up a few episodes. I've done one in four, kind of getting started, and then the power tools. Christina has talked about two 
editing and three at intermediate editing really shows you how you can dial in your adjustments and local areas on that and two and three both come with presets some of which you could make use of in episode four these are all just 249 a piece that's a ridiculously low price i hope you'll take a look and let us know what you think thanks thanks so much for watching